Hello and welcome to India Mobile Congress 2020. We have a great panel today on inclusive innovation and bridging the digital divide. My name is Alex Holtz. I'm the Global Head of Technology, Media and Telecoms at KPMG, and I'm based in Silicon Valley, and I very much wish I was with the panel uh, in real life in India, but we're not today. We have an esteemed panel that we will introduce momentarily. We are obviously in the virtual environment due to the impact of COVID-19. We certainly hope that this finds you and your families safe and well. COVID-19 has had a devastating impact on the world this year, and we certainly feel that the impact it's had on the global economy is something that is, is significant. But we also believe, uh, certainly at KPMG, that connectivity and technology is going to play a pivotal role in the economic recovery that we're hoping to see during 2021. In India, there has been enormous progress made on connectivity over a number of years, but there are still more than 600 million individuals without access to mobile broadband. It's a significant opportunity. So let's jump straight to the panel. We have this enormous opportunity that we want to discuss today. And I'm gonna ask each panelist to introduce themselves, talk a little bit about their organization and how they are helping to bridge the digital divide. So a big hello to the fantastic panel we've got here. And maybe I could start with Sanjay. Sanjay, perhaps you could just give us a few minutes and then we'll move around the panel and get into some discussion. Sanjay, welcome. Okay, thanks, thanks, Alex, and thanks for the introduction. Uh, just to introduce myself, Sanjay Malik, and I'm heading uh, Nokia Networks Operations in India. And I have been with Nokia for over 20 years now and have seen the Indian journey uh, quite closely. So I think we have a very apt topic uh, that technology is, uh, uh, is bridging the digital divide gap quite a lot in India and worldwide. Uh, so if you, if you just have a look at it, uh, that about what, five to seven years ago and where we are today. And as the technology has moved, this digital divide has been drastically coming down. And maybe let me let me just take a couple of a uh, couple of data points there. That seven years back, when mobile broadband was basically based on uh, XDSL and uh, based on 2G, so during that time, it was mainly the urban population which was able to access the mobile broadband. But as the technology has moved to 4G, technology has moved to fiber to home, then uh, this digital divide has come down drastically. So just to uh, put, put it in the right perspective, uh, mobile broadband over the last five years, in urban population, it has moved by about 5x. But in rural population, rural India, it has moved by 25x. So we used to have only about 10 million mobile broadband connection in rural India about five to seven years ago. And today we have about 250 million out of the 700 million Alex, which uh, which you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's basically the technology which uh, which has uh, provided that. And now the question again comes that yeah, with 5G and with analytics and all that, whether this digital divide will further go up, because yes. from 5G perspective, people say that yeah, most of the operators will roll out in the in the urban areas because that's where the commercials are and not that much in the rural rural area but and this this was the same question which came when we were introducing 4g yes so i would say that once this 5g technology or any next generation technology which comes into picture it will further bridge bridge this digital divide and reason i'm saying that is because of the use cases because of uh, whatever whatever uh, is uh, the enabler which will be there for the rural India, whether it is remote remote health, remote education, and all that, I would say 5G would be 
kind of again bridging this gap further and that's where nokia plays the role so as with, with my organization so we are basically again premier in bringing this technology to india and we are kind of number one uh, in the indian market and uh, we would be providing uh, the 5g technology and all the associated things with it so for example the analytics tool the machine learning things and other things which go along with it to really take india to the 5g journey and bridging this gap further fantastic sanjay we'll look forward to getting into some more discussion and debate about the promise of 5g and what it can deliver but let me move to marshall uh, marshall maybe you could just do a quick introduction as well hi alex um, uh, it's a great opportunity thank you thank you for uh, inviting me to this panel um, you know uh, my name is marshall korea i head red hat for india and south asia uh, i have been in the industry for over three and a half decades and i have seen this evolve uh, from Red Hat perspective, we are an enterprise software solution provider uh, with the open source uh, delivery model. And we partner a lot uh, in ICT across industries and for telco as well. And as this journey to cloud happens, you know, the open hybrid cloud, uh, cloudification, uh, a telco cloud, uh, you know, there are multiple areas that we work on, like automation, building cloud native application, uh, building, uh, you know, hybrid cloud is where we work uh, in the area of ICT. Uh, I would like to, you know, as pertains to digital divide, I think technology helps to bridge the digital divide. Look at the tremendous progress that India has made over years from 2G to 3G to 4G. Look at our mobile penetration, 1160 million subscribers. Look at the number of internet users in India closer to 455 million users. Look at smartphones that we have in India, you know, more than 400 million smartphone. Uh, I think there, the many users are smartphone first kind of uh, uh, users. If you look at, you know, the, the ICT or telco is a basic foundation or a pillar, but the application of that is across the industry. Look at the progress India has made uh, in terms of unified payments, uh, the number of mo uh, digital payments uh, in this more so, uh, actually it has got accentuated by, uh, you know, the COVID crisis. Uh, while, uh, you know, we spoke, I mean, today we are meeting, uh, you know, like this, last year we met physically, but the business kept going. And I think the digital transformation got accelerated during this um, uh, COVID times. From a telco perspective, I think uh, our telco industry did an amazing job uh, during this time. A uh, lot of things happened. And uh, basically, the uh, business district where people used to go and work, it started from working from home, or now what we are saying is working from anywhere. Financial inclusion is, is a big step, right? India had a huge unbanked population. How do you give them access to banking facility? And ICT infrastructure was clear, uh, clearly a, uh, you know, a core part of it. Now, as Sanjay said, you know, these concerns of whether it will further, uh, you know, uh, create, um, you know, larger digital divide was there across every step of the technology. But eventually it worked and it worked by multiple wins, means I think there was a lot of in innovation that happened. Government came up with a lot of, um, you know, support system in, in quite a few areas. And actually, digital divide is not just about, um, you know, ICT. There are other factors. Uh, for example, digital literacy. Uh, that's another factor which is important. Uh, so I, I think it, it is a broader issue. issue. Uh, and there are, of course, opportunities and challenges uh, which uh, we can work on. Uh, but very clearly, in my opinion, it's also a big opportunity. Uh, what 5G brings to the table is, uh, you know, speed, latency, and a huge bandwidth. And as we move to Atmanirbhar Bharat, as we want to go to Industry 4.0, use AI, ML, I, I think it's a tremendous opportunity. Marshall, thank you very much for that. Look forward to getting into some of the discussion, particularly around the digital literacy point, which I think is a, an excellent Excellent subject for us to discuss. 
Magnus, uh, let me let me come to you next. I think if we were in a, in a real panel, I'd have you and Sanjay maybe sitting at either ends. But at this point, you're sitting next to each other. Uh, so, uh, Magnus, why don't you do, give us a quick introduction and overview of your thoughts on this topic? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Uh, and of course, pleasure to be in India. So representing Ericsson, uh, lovely. I'm uh, CTO Asia Pacific for um, Ericsson. Um, Ericsson in India, you know, we have more employees in India than in Sweden. We have research and development. We have production starting doing business here already in 1903. Now, looking ahead, um, 5G, I think, is a fantastic opportunity along with 4G, of course. Connecting people, connecting enterprises, being the digital backbone of society. Um, we can see the traction is great. This past Monday, Ericsson published a new edition of the Ericsson Mobility Report doing a five-year prediction. In 2026, we believe there will be uh, 3.5 billion 5G subscriptions in the world. 27% of all the subscriptions in India will be 5G, fastly on the rise. So great movement there. Um, and also, of course, taking account of 4G. Uh, 4G uh, having 95% population coverage. In fact, there will be more people not having a phone in the population Pop, uh, the areas with coverage than the ones without coverage. Um, perhaps the most impressive, I think, looking at the numbers that we predict for India is the number of smartphones um, subscriptions. Until 2026, we predict 530 million new subscriptions will be added in India alone, then summing up to almost 1.2 billion in total. That is a fantastic pace for being connected, being digital, for individuals, for business being digital. It's just enormous. That will change society for the good, I humbly argue. Um, now, we started off with COVID as well. I mean, that in itself has accelerated certain moments. We see now working from home during lockdown times, how well the systems cope with it. Uh, being flexible in allocating the capacity, you can be out and about, you can be your home, you can be in your workplace, but you can be connected and you can continue to do whatever means and whatever business you do. That trend will continue. We see in many markets now, key things is, of course, remote working. It's um, remote shopping of essentials like groceries, and it is e-health. I would argue this is a trend that will stay. People are getting used to new behavior of organizing their life, and they will want to continue that. And even so, more so with 5G, that is then having the higher performance. Last pitch I'd like to make is on the industrial part or the enterprise part. Uh, industries and enterprises are digitalizing. Um, we predict uh, by 2030, the assessing 10 different segments that the value for mobile operators is 17 billion US dollars in additional revenue only here in India. So great potential for operators to offer services to enterprises and, of course, even more value to unleash in the enterprise area by having digital uh, base for their manufacturing and the ways of working. This is an enormous potential in India and elsewhere, and the early adopters will win. Time to start, start with 4G, then go into 5G. On the regulatory side, I'd say um, Digital India, fantastic. We need right away. We need to have clarity on spectrum at fair and reasonable terms. We can discuss what that is, but we want to enable coverage rollout so that we can unleash the power for consumers and enterprises. And it is coming all through the world. So early movers will have an advantage. Thank you. Magnus, thank you. Uh, great to get into some of those topics as well uh, shortly. Ankit, why don't we come to you next? Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, so firstly, again, thank you for uh, inviting me uh, for this uh, platform of the India Mobile Congress. Uh, we're very proud as an Indian company. Uh, Sterlite Technologies has been around for over 25 years. Uh, we're part of the larger Vedanta group. And we're actually our purpose 
is to transform lives by delivering smarter networks. So the topic is very apt uh, for the purpose of our company itself. Everything that we look at is ultimately what is the impact of society? How can we transform lives through the digital mediums that all of us and my panelists provide? I think fundamentally, uh, we are looking at this as really what are the uh, networks that can get built out? How do we make them happen in the time scale and the cost that's required for this country? And even more importantly, how do we make sure that the use cases are there and the benefit ultimately is there for the uh, for the end consumer, especially in rural India? We talked about the numbers, but in that order of around 300 to 500 million users in rural India still have to a, get good quality broadband. And even more importantly, we have to solve for how do they understand and start using this broadband for improving their lives? And I think that's a lot of work where Sterlite is now involved, STL is now involved. We've been so far been very active in not just manufacturing of the optic fiber uh, for all the requirements in the country. We've been working with the government very closely on the Bharatnet projects and the state-led projects on not only deploying this, uh, this network across the villages across India, in Maharashtra, Telangana, and many more Jammu Kashmir. But now we're also looking very, very closely at what are those end technologies which can enable the use cases to be developed at the end of that fiber. Uh, one statistic which is uh, still alarming is probably in the range of three to five percent of the rural villages which have been connected in India on, on fiber are actually utilizing that fiber network. So this is something that is something that we are looking at very closely. I'm very proud to share that we have launched a solution called STL GARV, which is actually creating a digital kiosk in 10 villages uh, today in Maharashtra. And we're seeing some very, very interesting use cases, which I can touch on it later, ranging from healthcare to education to government services. And something that Amazon is loving right now is what we're calling assisted e-commerce. So the, the villagers buying all kinds of things for their village requirements with a local village level entrepreneur that we're calling Garv Sathi. So a lot of very interesting things happening at, at rural India. I agree with some of the comments from, from Magnus, particularly that the government has to stop looking at the telecom sector uh, as a source of income, but also start thinking of how to enable our uh, 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 the Indians uh, with uh, high quality broadband. Uh, and some of that may need to us to think of just like investments in highways, investments in electricity, investments in water, we also have to look at uh, investments in building the digital infrastructure. So we're very excited and happy to touch on it later around how do we actually bridge this divide and the impact it can have. Thank you. Thank you for that fantastic stuff. And, and last but not least, Sanjeev, be great to hear from you. Yeah, so good evening and thank you very much for inviting and uh, giving this opportunity to us. So uh, I work for a company called Space World, which is an infrastructure provider. And we are the youngest among all, all here are stalwarts with 25 plus years. We are a six year old company. And we actually take the mobile and the fixed line coverages deep into the customer where he is actually living, staying and traveling. So we provide in building solutions into airports, into metro networks, into metro rail networks, into hospitals, into educational institutes like IIT Delhi, hospital like AIMS. And, and, and a spread out uh, area across the country. So our job is to actually carry the coverage and we work very closely with the operators to take their coverages. And obviously now as the networks are going to the next level, our focus is a lot on the fiber optic based networks and that's what we are building. I think the topic is very, very interesting and I like the inclusive innovation part of it, a big one, because I believe that is something that will play extremely important role in bridging this gap I believe before digital divide, there is a larger issue of economic divide and telecom has a huge responsibility to play a role there. There is no doubt, better the connectivity, it straight away goes into GDP. And that's what the telecom has to play the role of the foundation over here. Telecom, I believe, has proliferated much, much better than any of the other infrastructure services. Yes, we are the latest one also. Against electricity or water or any other places, I think now the telecom is everywhere right from rural, deep rural into Jammu Kashmir, as Ankit said, Starlight has done a huge job over there or, or into the northeast part of it on the deep rural part of it. And I think that is what will lay the foundation of this complete digital transformation and play a huge role into digital India, which I believe will lead to inclusive growth in economy of India. That's extremely important for us. 
Thank Sanjeev, you. thank you, and that, that very, very good points there. Well, panel, it's great to have you all here today. Look, we've got um, about 20 minutes here for us to have some discussion, and the themes that we've got for India Mobile Congress this year are around being smart, secure, and sustainable. So I was going to kind of structure our discussion, starting with the smart element. We've touched on, or many of you have touched on 5G. Um, let's, let's be real here. 5G will come to India later than in many countries around the world. Um, hopefully, the auction will be coming in the year ahead. But how can India be really smart? It's not going to be the first mover. So as a fast follower, how can India benefit from the lessons that will be learned in other areas? And um, Sanjay, maybe, maybe I'll start with you with that question. And, and what we'll try and do is a sort of some more rapid discussion and debate between, between us all here. So just back to the kind of smart theme here and, and what India can do to maximize the benefits of 5G for the population, and in particular around the digital divide, by learning from what's gone on in other countries. And Sanjay, you're on you're on mute, which may be the thing I've said the most in 2020. <laughs> yeah, I was on mute. Okay, yeah, I think uh, uh, basically, yeah, what what you're saying that we have to be a little bit more smarter now to kick off uh, kick off 5G in India. So first thing I would say that I mean when 4G came into India we were about four years behind behind the globe behind the other uh, other uh, countries and uh, in 2g and 3g it was even even more than that so i think at this moment we have to say that we will have to make this 2021 uh, as the 5g year because if we are not in 21 when 5g then definitely we are we are getting delayed but if it is 21, then we would be like one year to two years behind the globe. So not too, not too bad. Now on the smart enablers on this. So one thing which has happened is that because 5G is more than only radio, right? 5G is about the transport. 5G is about the backhaul. 5G is about the virtualization. And as Marshall was saying about the cloudification and all that. So one good thing which has happened and the operators have done a smart thing is that they are making themselves ready with all those those aspects radio yes it depends upon the spectrum but whether it is fiberization whether it is uh the the uh, the core virtualization those things have started kicking off kicking, that's kicking off and second i would say is maybe a little bit controversial but we talk about quite a bit about this 5g trial as of now in the in the Indian ecosystem. So there, I would say that now that uh, the 5G is a commercial technology, it has been tested, it has been rolling out. So maybe there is no need of doing the trial. And we straight go into commercial to really reduce our uh, our time period to get into the 5G, 5G wagon. So I would say avoid, avoid the travel at the moment. Yeah. Then second, I would say smarter thing would be India, large country. And uh, yeah, I know that uh, Ankit and his team have been doing fiberization in deep rural India. But at the same time, covering 100% India with fiber will not be that easy. So let's get on to this E-band, V-band to give this microwave connectivity for, for the rural India. So that would be the okay. second aspect which we should Cover, cover very fast. And then from the use cases perspective, again, there are there is quite a bit of debate about the use cases, what should be there. And that could be something, again, I always think that uh, supply creates demand in India. Yeah. So once there is a supply for bandwidth, once there is supply for high bit rate, low latency, it will create demand it will create use cases and that will go on and there are quite a few use cases which are which are already there yeah thank and you that's where maybe we will have to think of use cases for rural india right. to reduce this divide yeah and San so sanjay you make a really good point i'm interested uh, maybe just jumping to magnus magnus it's uh sanjay's talking a bit about i think uh, sanjay and correct me if i'm wrong but a sort of build and they will come model here uh, and that the demand will come 
Magnus, is that a view you share? Well, demand will come, um, but um, I would, uh, in the interest of India and, and any nation I talk to, uh, I would be uh, on the pusher side. I think uh, going into 5G in particular, the early mover advantage is there. And the reason I say so is that if you com if think of earlier Gs, it's mainly been for consumers. And if if you are, if you don't have the latest G, and your neighbors don't have it on the same street, it doesn't matter. You're all sort of in the same position. So in that sense, if a nation a little bit later enables the consumer part, the country can deal with. But now we're addressing enterprises. And for them, it's a competitive advantage to enterprises that they compete with outside of the nation. So if they are delayed, other enterprises in other countries will have a timing advantage and this i would seriously consider for any nation yeah. so enable your enterprises to digitalize that's really the key thing right yeah. now the regulation process takes take certain time and so on and so on but for any nation my strong encouragement is swift clarity in the market in respect to rules and regulations for spectrum and how this technology can be used, the earlier the better. It's a competitive advantage in a very different way from earlier Gs. Yeah. Um, then of course, India has a huge uh, advantage with the scale uh, that, that India has by having such a vast population. So, so it is there, but still, maturing the companies or enterprises is of importance. Now, for any enterprise who can't start with 5G today, what do you do then? Start with 4G. It's a good starting point. Many of the use cases you can do with 4G. 5G is superior in the way that it's the latest technology, best provisions for security and best forward uh, um, compatibility. So if you have the choice, you go for 5G, I argue. But today, if you don't have it, you go with 4G, start now. Yeah. Ericsson uses 4G and 5G in our factories. We started with 4G a few years ago. Today, we deploy 5G. Yes, yeah. And Magnus, it's really interesting. KPMG have been, done a huge amount of work with the operators looking at the business case for 5G. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as you've said, we've certainly found that the payback is very much in the enterprise uh, mm -hmm. space versus yeah, consumer, yeah. which is different from how we've seen transitions from 2 to 3 to 4G in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, Marshall, we, we talked a bit about open source and moving to the cloud. That's certainly one of the benefits that, that 5G will bring, and we'll move on. And I think, you know, Magnus and Sanjay both talked about the importance of 4G. Um, but talk to us a little bit about, you know, how that movement and the benefits of that connectivity can, can benefit the overall economy and then move to the, to the cloud environment. So, so what that really does is, uh, you know, it gives a tremendous amount of agility and flexibility to the operators. Uh, as Sanjay said, uh, you know, operators have done a lot of work on a way to 5G. And as Magnus said, you can do what we can with 4G in terms of use cases. But, uh, you know, what I, what I wanted to kind of dwell a little bit more is the work that operators have done over the last few years give them a tremendous uh, kind of flexibility. Uh, they have, most of the op operators have built, uh, you know, what they call as universal cloud or a telco cloud, uh, which means they can actually, uh, you know, move workloads as they want, both on network side, on IT side, and they can also monetize it, uh, even for enterprises. So I think during this COVID crisis, that gave them a lot of uh, uh, flexibility in the way they would uh, recalibrate uh, their capacity and you know move it to business district to kind of residential area so it is all about uh, you know with open source innovation how do you lower the cost how do you bring in uh, agility and ultimately improve customer yeah. experience that's the way we would term it uh, yeah marshall that's a, that's a great point and anki maybe you could bring this to life for us you talked a bit about you know the real life case studies that you've been experimenting with you know, what, what is this going to mean for, you know, I mean, I think you've got kind of two ways in which you've got the actual transforming the individual lives of consumers across the country. You've got the overall economic um, uptick from the connectivity. But what does this mean in real life 
to individuals as they see them, the benefits of connectivity coming their way and how we then bridge that divide? Sure. So I think just uh, to maybe share some uh, pretty startling numbers I came across. Uh, for one, uh, Practo, which is one of the leading uh, you know, online medical companies we have, they've seen a 700% surge uh, in people looking at mental health uh, queries. So just looking for advice, et cetera, especially in the COVID lockdown. And that's been a big issue, but everyone's resorted to talking and doing video consultation online. Just in terms of general e-health uh, video consultation, there's been a 5x increase. And then if we look on the education side, uh, both Baiju and companies like Unacademy, et cetera, I've seen anywhere between 2x to 3x growth uh, in terms of uh, consumers coming online, right? So still I would give uh, you know benefit of doubt that large portion of this has been in urban India and then maybe some elements of uh, you know the medical might be in tier two and tier three as well. But it does not solve this challenge where essentially it's simply impractical for India to set up hospitals all over rural India, set up good quality schools all over rural India. And obviously, all the use cases around uh, e assisted e-commerce, all the government programs and schemes, all of that will not go to rural India overnight. We have to find a solution for it. So the thought at least that we have at STL is why not the uh, you know pool in the resources from the education budget, pool resources from the healthcare budget that the government has every year, and maybe a couple more budgets and actually allocate that to creating these use cases that are definitely possible at much lower price points. Yeah. Uh, we have seen, for example, using assisted e-commerce, People for the first time are ordering things that you would never imagine. For example, uh, you know, 25, 30 inch TV in a village in India, because they finally have comfort that yes, with with my colleague who's a, a, a Garf Sati, a village level entrepreneur, I can order something, it will get delivered and it will be good quality. And if something goes wrong tomorrow, I know who's, who's neck to hold. So, so people are getting more and more comfortable. Uh, I think another big aspect of all of this, if we really have to go rural India is the, is the language part. We have to create these digital solutions in the local language. And I think that will further accelerate. Um, yeah. And I think just on the whole, uh, you know, 5G part, I think uh, clearly a lot of work is already happening. Uh, some of the announcements we're now seeing from Qualcomm, for example, on really looking at how to bring the price points down significantly. So we're looking at sub 15,000 and idly sub 10,000 rupees uh, to get to the handset levels. And I think that also, as I think Sanjay and Partially, Magnus was talking about to yeah. get that rapid uh, acceptance of of using 5G. Yeah. Um, last thing I would say on the network part, uh, uh, I think one positive part where I see operators being smart is that they are now no longer looking at home separately, tower separately, and small cell separately. When they're looking at network deployment across uh, cities, at least they are looking at so-called carpet coverage. That let me look at all these applications at one go. And let me deploy the fiber if I'm getting permission at one time. Let me be smart about it and future proof about it. And then on the cost side, of course, uh, there are technologies like ORAN, uh, which is hotly debated right now. And of course, SD and NFV on the uh, OLD, ONT, et cetera. So I think those are smart ways for the operators to look at uh, you know, cost saving. Yeah, fantastic. And you know, I'll maybe open this up to the panel. We've we talked about the smart piece, you know, secure and sustainable, but the smart piece also has a human element to it. And we are going to need uh, you know, great digital skills to take advantage of the new connectivity and solutions that we've all been talking about. So maybe just open this up for a comment and you know, please just jump in. You know, what, what, needs, what do you want to see happen that helps from a skills perspective to continue to build and bridge this digital divide? Well, a couple of things. Uh, in my opinion, why uh, access and device is important. I think digital liter literacy is important. As Ankit said, uh, the content being available uh, in regional languages uh, is an important factor, right? Uh, I mean, during this uh, uh, lockdown uh, post COVID, uh, many of the urban schools immediately actually turned to uh, digital classrooms, etc., and students were able to, uh, you know, continue studying. Uh, but in rural areas, there were challenges having uh, access to device or internet, or in some cases, even, uh, you know, training for teachers uh, was also a challenge and, and creating content. So content, uh, I would say, is a major issue, content in the uh, regional languages. And I think a lot of partnership that has to happen at a community level, 
uh, enterprises are actually doing a lot of work in terms of uh, corporate social responsibility in that area. But there is a tremendous opportunity, Alex, in this area. Yeah. Thank you, Marshall. And, and Sandeep, I was going to come to you. We've, we've talked a bit about uh, the smart piece. Um, secure is the, the other theme that we've got to talk about. And, you know, this is an incredibly important element of the connectivity structure that we've been discussing this morning. What, what's your take on that? How, from a secure standpoint, and that's not just cyber security, but that's thinking about supply chains and everything that comes with that. Why don't you talk us through your, your thoughts on it? Uh, yeah, but before uh, before going there, I believe there is another extremely important part in terms of the digital divide that we need to address. Obviously, the security and all will come along with the application part when we talk about it. I believe there are three parts to what, what needs to be addressed in order to bridge or to ensure that the digital divide doesn't increase but rather reduce. One is obviously the devices. If you look at in the Indian market, out of the 750 million handsets that we have, 42% of it still are not smartphones. Now, and this is the real divide that comes in. And 42% is a large number. Yes, it is in rural as well as it is in the urban part of it also. So I believe it is not just a, a divide between rural and urban. It is also a divide between the haves and the have-nots even in the urban area. And I think that is the extremely important part. This is the first part which needs to be bridged if we, we really want to take a next step into it. I believe there are a lot of new schemes from government that are coming up uh, in terms of manufacturing, make in India, in terms of PLI schemes that are coming up, which will help that. Now, the second part that I go to, uh, the connectivity part, and I think that that's the important part Sanjay also made, that 5G is not just about a RAN network. It is a lot about connectivity. It is a lot about... It is a lot about connectivity on a very stable and low uh, ping response time networks. And all that requires infrastructure that will be very different from what we are habituated of till now. Now, the, the, the RAN network is going to go very, very closer to the customer. If today we have some 4 lakh BTSs in the country, 5 lakh BTSs in the country, we are going to multiply it n number of times. And so that is another complete new model that needs to get come in. And third part, an application, sorry, uh, the question was on security, but I went into something else. Uh, the third part is on applications, and I think that is that is going to play the most critical role. I completely I agree with Magnus when he says that the enterprises are going to have a very important role. And that is where the security also comes into play right from that point. 5G is not going to get rolled out, chappa chappa, as we call in Hindi in, in the country. It is going to be focused on certain areas from where it will then pick up and go forward. Enterprises will have extremely important role and I believe they will be very well placed to address these issues of obviously to generate a huge content, simplify the application so that people can really use them for their own economic growth and third, build that complete security purpose. I believe India has played a very good role in terms of the banking and its security and I think enterprises will have to now come into play that role further in terms of security part uh, for, for the new applications to come in. Yes, no, Sanjeev, you make the, the fantastic, fantastic points. And, you know, we're, we're running with about five minutes left here and uh, such an incredibly important topic. We could probably spend hours talking about it, but I guess kind of one of the key points, and I, I certainly see that in my global role as I travel or used to travel around the world, but now now virtually traveling is, is seeing that digital divide in countries all across the world. It's a very difficult challenge and it's a you know it's a very simple economic payback situation um, so maybe just from a infrastructure standpoint I could ask Magnus and Sanjay as you think about working and, and partnering with the operators to build out the infrastructure you know what's one or two key things that you believe we need to see happen to ensure that that infrastructure and the investments are made also come into rural India as well as those urban areas how do we see a uh, proliferation of infrastructure into the rural area to ensure that, um, you know, that digital divide is bridged, you know, as quickly as possible? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, we're ready to go. We can do it today. So, so um, uh, what we're doing when um, 
uh, with our customers when we are helping them to upgrade to 5G. Um, of course, it's about new spectrum and it needs new equipment for that. That goes without saying. But we also provide the opportunities through a share software upgrade um, to emit 5G instantaneously on a radio carrier where you are emitting 4G. So on a one millisecond basis, 1,000 times per second, the system decides, shall I talk to you on 4G or shall I talk to you on 5G? So it can talk to both 4G and 5G users in the same radio frequency band uh, and switch up to 1,000 times per second. Um, and that's for radio gear that we've had in the field since um, 2015. So it's a great opportunity there. Uh, operators that uh, have uh, built out the networks, they can do a software upgrade and off they go. Um, as an example, Smart Tone here in Hong Kong, where, where um, uh, I'm living, had a 70% pop coverage, population coverage from start at launch. Swisscom in Switzerland obviously had 90% pop coverage after six months and so forth. So that can be done in a very straightforward way. Um, it's, we need the permissions, we need the spectrum clarity, uh, and um, we need the appetite to go in the local market. Yes, Mark. Magnus, that, you know, you make great points. You know, and Sanjay, maybe if I, I come to you, um, I, I personally don't doubt the technology um, but I do know that it gives a lot of heartburn for the uh, CFOs of some of the biggest operators in the world around how are they going to get payback on the investments of this great technology. Sanjay, how are you working with the operators to help them think through how they can afford to do this so that the benefits of connectivity can be driven into the, into the broader population? Yeah, so that's where I would say, Alex, uh, questions uh, repeat repeat itself in like five years or seven years, right? So you asked me, I think the same question, you or somebody else asked me yeah. the same question when we were introducing 4G. Yeah. So I think, see, one, one, one thing is clear that yes, as of now, whatever investment operators are making, we are trying to make sure that that investment is protected when you move from 4G to 5G. So all the base stations which we are providing, all the core which we are providing, is basically upgradable to 5G without without uh, kind of big investment there. So that that's one way to to kind of help CFO CFO there. And then second would be still it's it's the scale question, right? So as the global scale of uh, of uh, of any particular product keeps on going up, the price points also kind of come to the come to a normal level. So when the end with India scale is on our side. So once the scale has been going up, because the ultimately what we want is to reach a carpet coverage, which could be still three years away or four or five years away for, for 5G coming to the same 90% kind of a level. But we want to come to that stage, a stage, and then that's where the scale will help in Kind of reducing the cost per bit okay and then i think that it is the indigenization part so as we we have started manufacturing 5g equipment out of the factory already in india so we are manufacturing from india we are deploying from india and we are maintaining 5g networks from india sure. so all that indigenization sure. will also help the operators in india yeah Sanjay, it's, it's, you, you make a great point. And the scale opportunity, um, when we talked about, you know, the 600 million uh, opportunity here, I mean, this really does provide that kind of scale opportunity for those willing to make those investments. And obviously, over the last few years, we've certainly seen an appetite for investment in digital infrastructure in India, almost unprecedented around the world. Now, now we are nearly out of time. Um, it's been a fantastic discussion so far. Let me, let me maybe get us to finish here with asking you to... Say, so what's the, if you think about the sustainable element here, how do we make this sustainable? So Sanjay, to your point, we're not having the same conversation in five years. How, what's one thing that each of you would like to see that would allow us to bridge the digital divide as we go forward? And that could be anything from investment through to regulatory intervention. Um, Sanjeev, I'm gonna start with you if that's okay. Um, and we'll go quickly. I think we've only got a couple of minutes here, but Sanjeev, if there's one thing that you think you know, we need to see in the Indian market that helps bridge the digital divide, you know, what would it be? Uh, I strongly believe uh, that the both urban and the rural divide is to bridge 
on the digitization part i think rural is still a lot of work to do so while uh, i'll not uh, spend time on what sanjay said in terms of the electronics or the spectrum part of the cost i think there is another huge part that is the cost of connectivity and i believe india is very lucky to have lot of infrastructure that has been built outside the realm of operators also for example if you look at a fiber network today there is a huge networks that have been built by bharatnet or by the gas companies or by the um, power company i think there is a there is a balance which needs to bring uh, brought it here there is a synergy that is to be brought in here which can really address this issue of huge cost because 5g is going to be hugely costly because of the connectivity part and by the sheer scale that is going to get involved into it and i think if we as a country can optimize that and and really make use of the complete infrastructure that we have built this country only has built all that i think that can be a huge point uh, and and for that government will have to play its role it has played its role in terms of building this structure called bharatnet but i think the next step is to facilitate a proper usage of it by all i think is the next big step creating a business model for doing that uh, should be a important point to be covered to bridge this digital uh, gap sandy great great point ankit let's come to you next sure so uh, very quickly i think uh, the to be sustainable i think we need sustainable long term investments in building the infrastructure and then with that with the use case i think there are five six key stakeholders uh definitely we have to put the consumer and the enterprise uh, as a user we have to look at the government playing a very important stakeholder from various aspects the telecom operators all of us on the call in terms of equipment suppliers or partners and then i would also say in fact the private equity space as well where they can come in with very long term and sustainable capital which we are seeing globally so i think these stakeholders working together will help make sure that the, the sustainable investments happen Yeah, Anki, you make a great point. I'm I'm here in Silicon Valley, and there's a real excitement about the Indian market. We've seen yeah. literally billions flowing into the Indian market. Yeah. A, a great point, Magnus. Coming to you next for sustainability. Uh, we say in Ericsson, we're breaking the energy curve. Five G deployment with us will consume less energy in absolute numbers than previous Gs. Uh, we have AI-driven algorithms that. Uh, conserves energy, micro sleep that saves 14% of the emitted energy, uh, and um, as an example, uh, and we also have ways to devise how to build the network to have the right capacity in the right place, not to over dimension or under dimension, breaking the energy curve. That's uh, our motto. Great, Magnus. Thank you for that. And Sanjay. Yeah, I think your uh, maybe quick 30 seconds on your question that what one thing. for uh, bridging bridging the gap further uh, bridging the gap further and see every new technology has some inertia and some extra forces required to bring build the momentum so if i have to pick up one thing it would be that in the initial few years the government has to incentivize the operators to really go for rural coverage this is something what uso fund and other things which we already have maybe divert that specifically to 5g coverage in india that yes. would be my one top of the mind thing thank you sir it's an excellent point and um, we're running low on time here but marshall take us home what's your the one thing that you'd like to see that would help bridge that so, divide besides uh, what we heard from uh, all the panelists i think creating a robust ecosystem is very important i mm. think the scale and demographics of india is to our advantage right so and and i think we are able to attract a lot of investment so i think the robust ecosystem which is supply as well as consumption by right application creating industry 4.0 framework uh, and uh, the digital literacy so the entire ecosystem is important to make it sustainable yes marshall that is an a really great point and i i i love that you've you've brought that out in the final the final comment here i want to say a really big thank you to all for joining uh here today it's been a fantastic discussion and i think certainly from kpmg standpoint as we look into the industry it is so important that we're seeing better collaboration as we go forward and, and marshall you talk about an ecosystem i think more so than ever it is very clear no one organization can win um and so i made the little joke earlier and magnus and sanjay i hope you don't mind ericson and nokia clearly big competitors 
but you're both going to play a vital role in the market, as are many other organizations. And I think, you know, whether it's Fremenies or however you want to describe it, the more the industry can come together as one ecosystem, the better it will be in terms of bridging that digital divide, which is such an important topic um, in every market, but particularly for India, given the upside and opportunity. Yeah. So with that, let me say a very big thank you. I really appreciate all your time today. And thank you very much for joining us. And I hope you enjoyed the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.